So when we were chasing Mark around, Mark ollied up a curb, and mm -hmm. then all of a sudden I ollie up the curb behind him because I was already good enough to ollie up the curb, but I was nervous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Mark Chinese ollies down four stairs off a crack. I eat it because I couldn't ollie the four stairs. Yeah. I don't know what, and I just run down the stairs. I pick up my board and I keep chasing Mark Gonzalez yeah, yeah. through the city. But it seemed like really big wheels he was riding, and they were multicolor. And yeah. he just like ollied up this curb and just went dunk down four stairs. And I was like, "What is this?" But but that's the skating, like the like that was street skating, right? Yeah. Like it, it tells you yeah, what yeah, you yeah. have to work with, right? Right. And right. then you create with the material you have. That was yeah. that Mondo trip. How do we start? Okay, so I only know you as Sara. I don't even know what the hell your last name is. I'll say my last name. It's yeah. Tigrarian. I'm Armenian. Armenian. Okay. Yeah. So I figured like Saro, I've never ever Saro, heard. Saro, yeah. yeah. It's S-A-R-O. It's yeah. spelled the way you pronounce right. it. Sado. Okay, so I will also say we are in Union City, New Jersey. Right. Which is just on the other side of the Hudson River. Right. You could probably throw a rock at the Empire State Building. You got Jersey City, Weehawken, Hoboken. Right. And... What's up here, North Bergen? Yeah, it's then, actually Weehawken, then in Jersey City, and then uh, it's West New York, and then right. North Bergen is like right, 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 right. back behind me and up all the right. way over oh, there. Okay. Growing up here, you said you grew up across the street. Yeah, right across the street from this Washington school. This is where school, you yeah. grew up skating. Part for the most it, part, for yeah. The most part. For the most part, yeah. So, uh, and this is called Washington School. Washington right? Grammar School, yeah. Okay, so we're in front of Washington Grammar School. How does a kid? get exposed to skateboarding in Union City, New Jersey. All right, so for me, the way it happened was back in the late 70s, skateboarding, I would see it was popular on TV. Yeah. Right, and then um, there was a martial arts movie that I saw with Chuck Norris called The Force of One, okay. and the first guy that came out was a skateboarder. So on those classic television shows, once in a while, they'll show like a skateboarder. Yeah. If he rolls in the mail row of sporting goods with that envelope in his back pocket and rolls out with a package of Christmas goodies, then you're on the way to your first major bust, rookie. So I begged my mom from a department store called Woolworth, which is yeah, out yeah, of business, yeah. to get me a skateboard. Yeah. And that's the first time I ever had a skateboard. But there was no one that skated right. around here. Okay. Absolutely no one. Okay, so what year is this again? Like Late 70s. late 70s. Mid to late 70s. Okay. When I think of you and your crew, I think of Felix. And, I, and when I found out Felix was from New Jersey, I was like, what? That's you didn't know, insane. right? Skateboarding between New York and New Jersey. And one of my friends from Jersey, who I went to high school with, is one of the only people who still skateboards from back in that time period. Jeez. Yeah. Coco. Is originally from SF. Originally from SF. Moved here. Moved here. Yeah, that's how we got to know him. How do you meet those guys? Sometime around grammar school, maybe 82, 83, my friend Caesar invited me to play Manhunt. And then this is where I saw Felix for the first time. Him and Felix lived around the corner from each other, okay. which is like six blocks away. Okay. Pre-skating though. Pre-skating. Pre-skating. Okay. Okay, then, then high school hits, freshman year, and I played a lot of tennis. I tried out, made it on a team. Felix was there. Felix doesn't remember this though. Okay. So we played tennis on the same team, but like, again, we didn't get to know each other, right? It was in 85, that kid Caesar yeah. had a skateboard and I was leaving high school, uh, this is junior year, yeah. and I see my friend Caesar skating and I said, Caesar, what are you doing? You're skateboarding. And he showed me his board. It was a Zorlac double cut, flat, no concave. Amazing. And he showed it to me. And then long story short, that's when I picked it up. Caesar invited me to skate the ramp that they had by Felix's house. Okay, wait, this is a different ramp than the one that's down here. Yeah, yeah, okay. okay. This is like, it, it all comes to here. Yeah, yeah. After skating two weeks there, and it was on an off street where cars would once in a while come by, then we got to move the ramp. Okay, so it's just a jump ramp maybe? It was just a small ramp. Yeah. I don't even think it had transition. Okay. And we were all just like learning, these guys were like skating before me, and they were skating, Felix was skating vert before me, because the vert ramp was up already. Okay, so Felix is already kind of like... Vert skater, seasoned. street skater, yeah, 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 for like a couple years yeah, before yeah, yeah. I did. 85, junior year, 85, 86, they showed me that little ramp that they had. After skating there for two weeks, and then once in a while a car gets through, I told my friend Caesar, and Felix was there too, and other guys, other skaters, I said, bring this ramp here to Washington School. And then that's how this whole started. Yeah, 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 from like a good five years, yeah, yeah. 
this is your main spot. Main spot. Yeah. You don't get kicked out. And it was like the a ramp you, lives in here. It stays in here overnight. No, we couldn't leave it yeah, in here. We did that yeah, yeah. because then the janitors would come yeah, and trash yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, got you. So next to my property, I have an alleyway. So we used to store sure. all the ramps inside my alleyway and actually Full build in, put yeah. them on the boards, bring them over. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. actually build it in front of my house because yeah, yeah. I take out an extension cord, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Build the jump ramp and then skate it here. So we built jump ramps, wall ramps, so and rail sliders. This place becomes a hot spot. Yeah. 85 to and 90. And now you're skating here with Felix, but Coco's not here yet? Coco eventually came in like 86. Sure we all enough. ran into yeah, each yeah. other. He heard about the jump ramp at Felix's house at first and then here. here yeah. And then that's how that whole started. Okay. So much went down here, you have no idea. Yeah, no, I know. I, I mean, I can only imagine. The same thing with the banks and all the contests. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then we would get together. It was like, it was literally like a family. We would get together and just go from like spot to spot to skate. And then we'd meet up at an ESA contest and skate. That's yeah. how, that's what we did. These guys put me on Dogtown, right? And after Dogtown, I had a stack of Dogtown boards. Wait, wait, hold on. Who's these guys? Bruno, Rod, and Jeremy. How do they put you on Dogtown when Dogtown is red dog and okay so that started because right. jeremy henderson was skating for dogtown okay. without a pro model when bruno and rod started shut they were considering turning someone pro and they said let's turn jeremy pro right so this is the way bruno is um, explaining it to me yeah they turned jeremy pro jeremy tells jim muir i'm not going to skate for you guys anymore well jim muir said well find somebody for us you're you're, you're jeremy's replacement hold on <laughs> hold on I was the first guy. Yeah. So the way Bruno explained it to me back then, and I want to thank Bruno, sure. Rod, and Jeremy for sure. this. I was the street guy. Mark was the vert guy. You know who Mark is? Wait. Mark Podgurski. That Mark was the vert guy, and I was the street guy okay. in 89. Yeah. Right? Because Dogtown is heavy in 89 too. You're right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Heavy, super heavy. Right. So, so by 90, Jim Muir actually, because I'm in and out of the city, yeah. I'm not in the city. Yeah. Jim Muir was looking, talking to Bruno about finding people that actually lived in New York and skated there every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't be there every day. Yeah, yeah. So that's when they picked up Richie Rojas, yeah, Richie. Obed Rios, yeah. Ivan Perez, Jesus. and I think Big Jim got on towards like the yeah. tail end of it. And at a certain point, I'm sure they were all shut kind of like yeah. flow or... I mean, we all skated together, totally. you know? Yeah. I got to know yeah. Bruno and Rod and yeah, Shut yeah. had started, and it was Bruno, Rod, Jeremy, Aliasha, yeah, yeah. Wiley, Pete, sure. all those guys, sure, sure. that whole crew. Cool. Yeah. And we got to know each other, and then that's how that relationship yeah. all started. And then we were always with each other, yeah, you know? Yeah. It was like a family, that's yeah. what it was like. That's freaking fascinating. So how long does the uh, Dogtown thing last? About three years until yeah. 91. The same year Dogtown went under, was the same year Shut went under. Yeah, and then when they went yeah. out of business, I personally didn't bother trying to find another sponsor. I just skated but with my friends. you kept skating, yeah. Yeah, I kept on skating. One of the craziest I, things I remember you doing was ollieing off that wall into that brick bank. It's by the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel. Oh, yeah, the, the Dude, in RB's video. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That is a crazy Thanks. Because back then, that was kind of like, people didn't really do that, and that was like, well, I remember when, when I had heard that you did that. That was in 99, yeah, I, I was remember. Like, Dude, that is fucking crazy to do. Thanks, I appreciate up that. There, it was like pretty crazy. I like giving credit where credit is due. Jason Massey tried it, yeah. and when he tried it, he cracked his board. He didn't go back. But I was at the right place and at the right time. Yeah, RB and Red were yeah. there, and they shot a yeah, photo, and uh, it was in the video. Okay, so let's jump ahead. This is a far jump, and ex you know I apologize no, for okay. this. But, but the reason we're here is because you posted footage of Mark Gonzalez skating in Manhattan in 1987. Essentially what it is, is the, it's the raw footage of the Don Hoffman filmed outtakes or footage that ended up in Mondo Vision, Gonzo Goes to New York City. So when I saw that, granted that, some of that footage is in uh, Death Bowl the Dog uh, to downtown. Wait for the doorman to go in, run up and start doing whatever. And then Gons came and visited Jeremy Henderson. You know, and Gons was like, I can grind this. And everyone was like, no, you can't. One more time. One more time and I'll make it. They have that. They got some of that footage from Don Hoffman. 
But what you were posting, they didn't have, is more stuff that they didn't have. And I, when I saw this, I was like, how the hell do you have this? Because I told you, I attempted to call Don Hoffman, and I actually spoke with him, but he was like, you can't have this footage, like, this is treasured stuff. You post this footage, and I'm like, my brain starts to melt, because now, not only do you have the 8th Street Rail footage, which I guess I'll point this out, like I said before, this is the first time anyone on planet Earth grinds a handrail on a skateboard. Yeah, I know. So you have yeah. the outtakes of that, but you also have Mark board sliding the nine stair at the banks, which I'm assuming that's the first time the nine stair had ever been board slid as well. I think so, yeah. I don't, I don't remember. I can't imagine anyone I don't remember coming. anyone before that. Yeah. No. Afterwards. Yeah, afterwards. But he also ollies down the nine stair, and for back then, that's a freaking hefty ass ollie. Yeah. So tell me how you get that footage. All right, from what I remember, Felix did tell me back then that he was skating with guns in the city. Okay. Okay, so he skated like 23rd Street Banks. Yeah. And then uh, someone shot a photo of Felix doing a uh, frontside rock and roll at the 23rd Street Banks. Remember the yeah. banks with the highway yeah, divider? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so, so s this is what I remember. And then he said something otherwise, because you were asking me on Instagram and Felix, how did it happen? I thought I got it back then because Felix got a copy of it back then. But okay. then Felix said something otherwise. He said okay. that when he was living with Mark and Jason, yeah. that's when he got it then maybe I got it after that okay so when he was living with Mark and Jason could have been like 88 or 89 because yeah. Felix moved out of here to Florida around 88 okay and then he would periodically visit yeah and then he was traveling around because after he left shut he got on world industries yeah. so it's quite possible maybe that's when he got it and then I got it after that but I thought I saw it back then yeah that's what I thought I saw but which you might have but, I may have yeah. but I could have sworn he but, he had a copy of it maybe I saw it back then and I didn't make a copy back then until maybe a couple of years later because I used to visit him in Florida okay or maybe you just w saw Mondo Vision and were no 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 okay. no okay. I saw that raw footage before Mondo okay so Felix at some point moves to Florida right and uh, you're saying you used to go visit him in Florida yeah anyhow somehow you get a copy of Felix. Now what Felix told me, or I think this is, I don't know if you told me it or the Felix version or whatever, but basically from what I understand, Felix is living with Mark and Jason or visiting them, staying at the house. I had heard that Mark has a car and Jason and Felix didn't have a car and Mark went out somewhere with his car and Felix threw a tape in and dubbed the tape brought it back to Jersey, somehow you get it and you dub it and that's how this thing exists. That I don't know. That okay. California story, okay. I have no now, idea. Now, how do you end up staying at Mark Gonzalez's house in Huntington Beach? So this is interesting. There's so many layers to this. Um, you can look up an old video. I believe it's Phoenix Am. Um, yeah. Phoenix Am was kind of like our Am finals. Yeah. And like go going into the Am finals, I was like ranked number one. So there was like a little buzz on me. Okay. And uh, I go out to Phoenix. Mike's out to Phoenix a week early because the next week is a pro contest. Mark's out in Phoenix a week early because the next week is a pro contest. And then he's with Jason Lee. Okay. And Jason Lee rolls over to me and goes, oh, I heard you're the best on the East. I'm the best on the West. And he did a 360 <laughs> flip in my face. And I went, ooh. I go, yeah. he wasn't lying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there was this energy there between us that we all were like in this in this mix together. And Mike was kind of uh, doing and I were kind of like his protégés, Chris Pastris and I were kind of like his protégés as Jason was to Mark. And they had kind of been brewing a little thing uh, where they were going to start a company called Blind because it was the opposite of vision. Right. And it was supposed to be Mike, Mark, Jason, Chris and I and maybe even Steve Ortega was somewhere around the outskirts of it. I don't know. Uh no, no, no. That was um, Mike and Matt Hensley's company that didn't happen. So the, so the original nucleus right there was we were going to create blind together. So there was this real big energy. Sure. And then during that time, uh, Mike starts dating Ann. Yeah. Who is Jason's ex. Yeah. So first easy stay for me in California was going to be with Mike. But because Mike was staying with Ann and that whole thing was a little weird to be the guy who always wants to go skate and he wanted to smooch a bit. 
I yeah. was kind of like, ah, it was easier for me to stay with the other homies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I move over to Mark's house. He has an empty room, which is his brother, Frank, I believe, if I remember correctly. I'm so old now, bro. I just turned 54. And that's like, God, I don't even know how many years ago. That's like, I can't do the math. Like 30 something years ago. I don't know. I, would you say you're at Mark's and Jason's in Huntington in 88, 89? Or is it? Yeah, it was 88, 89, because my AM finals was 89. The end of 88, 89, I believe, if I'm correct, I, I have to go to my mom's house to look at trophies. So I'm staying in Frank's room, and Mark has all these VHS tapes in the living room, and Mark has stuff to do. He's pro, he's an adult, although he's just basically my age. But I'm immature because I don't have anything to do but skate. Yeah. And then Jason was just starting to get things busy. And Jason lives there most of his life in the area. So yeah. Jason has stuff to do. So oftentimes I'd be sitting at the house like <laughs> going through all the videos and then there's just piles of videos. So as I'm going through other videos, I pop into one video and it has the ticker tape, yeah. which I guess basically it was Mark's tape to be like, yes, no, yes, no, which now I understand that. Sure. But back then, I, I'm just like, ah, this thing's messing up my view. Yeah. But I'm watching all the stuff. And then the funny thing is, depending on which tape you have, the first, this is going to sound crazy. And when you speak to old people, we usually sound crazy because it is crazy. The first poly is me in Washington Square Park on the bent pole. And it's in that footage. And they filmed it. And I got to watch it. But it was never going to be used for anything because I never rode for anything. So all my stuff on the Jersey barrier, all that stuff just died it, or it's dead somewhere on some tapes. But somehow that pulley was on that tape. So I go into Jason's room and I borrow his VCR. I wire the whole thing and I just dub the tape. Wow. And then I don't know how much more I dubbed, but I just basically wanted to get my pulley and I just let it run. And then that was the tape that then later came home with me. I'm just curious now. Do you remember uh, bringing the tape back to Jersey and handing it to Sorrow and him being like, no, no, I, I, I don't think he even taped it when I lived in Jersey. I think he taped it when he came to visit me in California Oh, okay. or he may have taped it when he came to visit me in Miami. It was one of the two. I'm you know what? I'm almost sure it was in Miami. Sorrow dubbed that at my house in Miami when he came down to visit. Do you remember dubbing the tape from Felix? Yes, I do. OK. How did you do that? VHS, VHS. VHS, okay. Yeah, Just, back then, yeah. yeah. Now, what I'm super fascinated with, and I've, I talk to all, all kinds of people from, you know, skateboarding to like graffiti writers, whatever, and a lot of people have a hard time holding on to physical objects from their childhood. That's true. But how do you end up hanging on to a VHS dub of this footage? It Are you a hoarder? Are no, you? I'm not. Okay. No, I'm not. Okay. I'm a minimalist. Okay. The things that mean a lot to me, I, I kept. Yeah. It blew my mind. It blew my mind back then. Yeah. I knew the importance of it back then. That's yeah. how come I kept it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then, you know, it, it's the same thing with Brian skating Grand Slam. Yeah. You know, it meant something to me, so yeah. I kept it. You yeah, know yeah. what I mean? And it was the same thing with me and my friends, yeah. like Hector and Alex and all those guys I grew up skating with here. Yeah. You know, I kept it because obviously sure, it, it meant something personal. to me, yeah, you know, yeah. and you, when you started skating, you fell in love with it. It was the passion that got you into it. Yeah. And then the camaraderie that you had with your friends, it was the same thing with same, me and yeah, my group yeah. of my friends, too. That's how come I held on to all those pics and videos, you know. Yeah. And then I remember saying to myself, what am I supposed to do with all this stuff? And then my mom ended up in a nursing home and I tried getting myself on Instagram and it was like too much for me to deal with. Yeah. So I was going to the nursing home like two, three times a week. The yeah. last three years of her life was at a nursing home. Yeah. So afterwards, like a year later after she passed away, that's when I got myself on Instagram and I was figuring it out. And I said, man, I got all these like old pics, videos. I'm going to document everything, what I personally experienced yeah. with me and my friends, you know, and then just post it and hopefully, you know, somebody appreciates it. And yeah. obviously you appreciate yeah, it. So yeah. thanks. I appreciate that. So
that's cool.
saving that footage for like a documentary film or whatever but you gave the footage to mark way back when and then felix got it you know what i'm saying and like, i got it yeah but don hoffman probably has way more crazier shit. probably does yeah know? and my, he might even have more stuff that you don't have i'm sure he does you know like from those sessions because mark was here for like i mean i've heard stories I heard that Jeremy filmed a lot of it because Don just didn't have the technical skill to be honest. You mean stage. Jeremy Henderson? Jeremy Henderson. I didn't know that. Yeah. In fact, I want to say Jeremy might have even told me that. Or maybe it was a conversation between Jeremy and Eli that I had heard. Don and I, and I had to bait a camera. He was afraid to go out of the crawl because the camera was 60 or 60 or 80 grams. So he was like terrified to go anywhere in New York with it. And I'm like, fuck it. You know, the kill, I filmed the downhill out of the window and the Harlem sequences. I filmed the downtown at night. With fucking crackheads all around me, like I didn't. No one was bum rushing us, dude. Yeah. So different at night downtown. I shot lines. I told Mark, all the way up the three, do the round banked pyramid all the way over the hip of the pyramid, go back and all the way down the three, and with the bus stop, that big steep wall angle that used to drop in yeah. just the bus stop. Sure. Right yeah. I filmed that line first. But I, I, we used to do that. How is it using that giant camera? How much did that uh, take away? Well, holding out of the car in Harlem was hilarious. Holding the data cam, like, it was like 25 pounds, and it was awkwardly long, and it was like getting out the window was hard, and then holding out the car window, and, you know, I shot Mark a lot from car, from the car, and that yeah. was really got used. It was such bitching footage, man. I can't believe these SoCal days are so into just like the stunt, the maneuver. And the shit we had was so righteous and gritty. To be, like I said, to be the first person on earth to ever 50-50 grind a hand round, and now I was saying it's like so commonplace, you know. Beyond commonplace, it's gotten so technical nowadays. It's so crazy. How about Broadway and 8th Street? You know all that traffic there? Fucking A, Broadway and 8th Street it is. Yeah, babe. All right. Okay, so uh, we are here at Mercer and 8th Street in uh, Greenwich Village, Manhattan. And this is the site of the building plaza area where Mark grinds the first handrail, first 50-50 grind down a handrail. Now, whether or not Mark did one prior to this, you know, it's who knows, I don't know. Gotta ask Mark. But this is where the first 50-50 grind that gets captured on film happens right here. And this building is called the Georgetown Plaza Building. Uh, it was built in 1967, and it was built by two guys, the architects, Leo Stillman and John Pruin. Uh, Mercer Street actually is named after a general in the Continental Army, American Revolution, a guy named Hugh Mercer. He was a brigadier general, and he was a physician and the street used to be called Claremont Street and it got renamed Mercer Street after him. But uh, let's take a look at the stair set. And uh, I just want to point out that the whole plaza got remodeled, but I'll talk about that over there. So yeah, the plaza is, I don't know, with the scaffolding, I don't know what they're doing now. Looks like they're working on the windows or this, you know, whatever. But. Uh, the plaza got redone, this whole thing got redone, and so it, it looks different in the footage. And uh, this got redone maybe 15 years ago. I don't know the exact time. But I remember at the time it was like a big deal because they were removing these incredible rails that were pretty low. And in a sense, they never really got skated after a certain time period because rail skating kind of just took off and it escalated 
really fast, you know. The other thing is that this plaza and this spot was always a, a bus because there's a door guy here. So it was kind of like get in and get out. So if you're watching the footage, Mark is skating it at night. Uh, interestingly, there is uh, some phone booths that used to be right here, some public phone booths. And I think they used to be like right around here. And uh, in the footage, I'm pretty certain it's Don Hoffman filming. And you could see Jeremy Henderson and some guy, some random guy on a bike. He looks like a bike messenger or something. But um, the session happens in 1987. Mark comes to New York, stays at Jeremy Henderson's house. Um, and as the story goes, a whole crew of guys are out skating one day. I think Eli is with them, Eli Gessner. I think um, uh, Felix Arguez is with them. A whole bunch of guys, and they're out skating. Mike Vallely is also there. And Mike Vallely tells this story, Vallely, sorry. Uh, I always say Vallely. But Mike Vallely tells this story of mobbing around the streets. They come to this spot. I saw, the first, I saw Mark Gonzalez 50-50. The first 50 50 on a hand row. I was there. He made me do it after he did it. I didn't want to do it. And Mark 50 50 grinds the hand rail. As the story goes, according to Mike, he wants to try it as well because he's like, sees Mark do it. And Mike says he's a little afraid to go from the side of the rail. So Mark, uh, I'm sorry, Mike tries and I think he does. He, so he's the second person to grind the handrail. I don't know if in, in history, but on that day, Mike says he ollies over the top of the handrail and grinds down it. Now the handrail was really short. It was really wide, so it was perfect for 50-50 grinds. And, uh, you know, according to that story, they're mobbing around that day. And then apparently what happens is Don comes to town and and or Don is with Mark during the whole trip. I don't know, I don't know why it wasn't filmed that day. Probably because there wasn't a filmer there. I don't think Don was mobbing around the streets with that crew of people. But basically they come back at night with the camera and this is where Mark films the 50-50 grind. He also front boards it. So that was basically right here. The set of stairs is the same. The plaza space is the same. The rail used to basically be right here. This was a little different if I remember correctly, uh, but basically right here is where this whole thing goes down. And this is where the first 50-50 grind captured on film happens. It's the summer of 1987. I think Mondo Vision, I don't know the exact date when Mondo Vision comes out, I remember that it came out a little bit later and so the time period gets a little skewed and I think basically what happens is that people are seeing grinds on handrails come out because the footage is staggered but obviously Mark does it in the summer of 87. He also then goes down to the banks and board slides the nine stair in 1987 which is unprecedented. It's much bigger rails than anybody's doing at the time. And that Banks rail, even today, even the original Banks rail that's there was no like, it's, no, it's nothing to like really play around with, even though kids do play around on nine stair handrails at this point. But it, it's, it was a tall rail. It was like a pretty, you know, decent um, board slide. Even, even going into the 90s, it was like something that was, you know, a considerable uh, rail to, to do tricks down. But Mark board slides that. But this right here is where the first 50-50 grind happens in New York City, in Greenwich Village, on 8th Street and Mercer in the Georgetown Plaza buildings uh, uh, area, uh, whatever, stair set. So that's it. Cool. This is my, my high school oh, wow. notebook. Going for the guns, going to get them. Maybe Rocco, maybe Grigley, or maybe Johnny Cop. What the fuck, man? I don't know. I was a kid back That's then. That's amazing. Yeah, you filmed this, going for the guns. That's amazing. We used to call ourselves the New Jersey Skate Corps. Yeah. High school notebook That's back in 85, 86. That's insane that you still have this. Yeah. Open my eyes and start your gun. Take my toes on the shelf. Eat on the shelf. Over the wall. 
Let me check it out. Oh, that's how they're getting it. <laughs> so anyhow, yeah, anyhow, blah, blah, blah.